Hello there, welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Jake. You can probably hear I'm at a racetrack. I am wrapping up my season racing with the National Autosport Association and this E36 BMW Spec 3. And what that means is it's time to tow home. The car is loaded up in my enclosed trailer and we're here to talk about the truck I am towing home with, which is a 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. So heading outside here, this is the truck. This is the 2500 HD. This is a 2024, which Chevy made a few updates to for the 2024 model year. The first thing that you'll notice that we're gonna talk about is the styling. So the front end of these trucks is a bit controversial to say the least. I am not the biggest fan. This is actually the pre-facelift nose because this one is an LT but Chevy did change the nose on some of them. If you get an LTZ, a high country, or a few of the other higher end trim levels, you will get the updated nose. The easiest way to tell what's what is with the headlight. They will have kind of a C-shaped running light here, and it's a little bit of a more uh, sleek design, a little more improved. I'm still not the biggest fan, but uh, that is the update that they made for the styling here. Now, looking at this truck, this is going to be a crew cab and a standard bed. This is not the long bed, although you can do that if you want. And a couple things to note out here that are all about the badges. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the drivetrain because this is the 6.6 .6 liter, but uh, it's not the Duramax. This is the 6.6 .6 liter gasoline powered V8, and it is hooked up to a 10 speed Allison branded transmission. Now I say Allison branded, not Allison, because according to Allison themselves, they actually don't build the transmission. GM builds the transmission. Allison just did all the durability testing and said, hey, this is a good design. We'll put our stamp of approval on. It. So that is what's going on here with the engine and transmission. Like I said, 6.6 .6 liters V8. Uh, it makes 401 horsepower and 464 pound-feet of torque. This de debuted in 2020, so it's not the newest engine. It's just the big deal is getting that 10-speed hooked up to this versus the 6-speed it had before. The other thing going on here is the Z71 package. This is going to be like a lighter off-road package that gives you a few things just to make things a little better if you're gonna venture off pavement. Most notably, you've got these uh, Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires going on, and then if you poke your head inside the wheel well, you've got these Rancho shocks. And what that means is you're gonna have a softer ride overall. So versus a, an LT without this, or an LTZ or High Country without Z71, the ride is gonna be a little bit softer, it's a little more off-road tuned versus having highway tires and the, the other sort of shock absorbers that are just built more for highway use. Now that's gonna come into play while we're towing, I'm gonna to talk about that while we're towing on the way home, so uh, let's keep that in mind. Now as we move back, I just boinked myself on these mirrors. These are huge mirrors. These don't power extend, some of them do, and uh, I think they just look kind of weird, but they work, so whatever. I don't love them, but anyway, let's move back to the back and talk about towing for a second because I do have the trailer hooked up, so you can see this is a traditional bumper pull trailer going on. So uh, this has a two and a half inch hitch receiver. If you're gonna use a lot of trailer hitches, uh, you're gonna need an adapter, which I do have in here, you just can't see it. And then typical, you know, safety chains, whatever. This is a seven pin trailer connector and then Chevy offers uh, trailer cameras if you wanna have um, cameras hooked up to your trailer to see inside of it or behind it and it'll show on the infotainment screen. Now this truck also has the fifth wheel prep package, which you can maybe see among all of my old BMW wheels and cooler, but that's in there and you do get connectors uh, over here. You've got a four pin and a seven pin for trailer wiring as well. Now, quick thing about my trailer looking over here. This is an aluminum trailer. The box itself is 20 feet long. This is a four foot V-nose and then from hitch to taillights, it's gonna be 27 feet. Fully loaded with the car and everything, we're looking at about 7,000 pounds. So nowhere near this truck's particular towing capability. This one is rated at 16,000 pounds of conventional towing on that hitch. Now, one thing I do love about GM that they do here, if we pop the driver's door open, first of all, we'll talk about payload, but second of all, they've got just a nice little sticker right here that shows you everything. So this is for this exact truck, for this exact VIN, Everyone needs to do this. This is so amazing. So they're using SAE J2807, which is the Society of Automotive Engineers testing. So this will meet all of their testing standards. And uh, this is rated for 16,000 pounds of conventional trailering uh, with 1,600 pounds of tongue weight. If you go on Gooseneck, it's 18,000 to 400 pounds with 2,760 of max tongue weight. Now your max payload here is listed as 3,392. And that's nice to see because payload always depends on your specific truck 
the options you have, the trim level, all that sort of thing. So that's nice to see right here. All right, now let's look up from this sticker into the rest of the interior because that is also what's new for 2024. Finally, Chevy has updated the interior in these trucks. They were uh, less than desirable before, I think, and they finally did a few things. So I'm gonna get a running start because this, this one doesn't have running boards. I'm six foot one and it's still a climb to get up here. So let's hop on in, close that door. And the nice thing in here is that you've got a much more modern interior. So you've got a fully digital instrument cluster here. You can configure how this is all displayed. I've got it on kind of the more classic view. And then pulling back, uh, you've got some nice controls on the steering wheel for your cruise control over here, heated steering wheel. And then uh, this all controls what you see in that cluster. Still have a traditional column shifter for the 10 speed, which a lot of people seem to love. I'm kind of ambivalent about it, but yay truck stuff. And then looking further over here to the right, this is kind of the star of the whole thing is the center stack. So this is much nicer than what they had before. We've got a nice wide screen here. This is more or less the same setup as you would get in a Silverado 1500 uh, that they also redid for 2023. I like this quite a lot. It's very easy to use. Uh, and then you've got plenty of physical buttons here for various controls and looking further down, you've got your trailer brake controller and then plenty of physical controls for your climate as well. Love this setup. It's very easy to use. The softwares are great. One thing I want to talk about is in the trailering icon here. So this is really nice. You've got a uh, guest trailer setup. So you can also set up your own trailer. You can add a couple trailers in here and it'll track the mileage you accumulate on them. It'll track maintenance you need to do, your fuel economy, whatever. But even with a guest trailer, you can still track some stuff. So as we start driving, it'll track the mileage. It'll track the MPG while we're doing it. It'll run a light check if you need it to. Uh, we're, we're good to go there. Uh, I don't have any cameras hooked up, so it won't show that. And then it gives you a checklist, which is nice. I am a, you know, pretty experienced tower, but even then it's nice to just go through and say, yeah, I've done all this stuff. The lights are working. Yeah, yeah, great. Wheel chocks, mirrors. Oh, did I adjust the brake gain? Maybe not. Let's do that. Okay, we're done. And now we're all good to go. The other nice thing that Chevy's done here is they've got an alert set up if you are exceeding your gross combined vehicle weight rating. So this is turned on by default. You can turn it off if you want. Uh, if you want to just throw a bunch of stuff in the bed and you know ruin your suspension, go right ahead. But uh, it will give you an alert and uh, tell you, hey, you should take some weight out or, or shift stuff around. Um, anyway, I like having it on. I think it's a nice little touch. So that is kind of what you get for the trailering setup. And then, like I said, the trailer brake controller is right down here, very easy to configure as well. And when you configure that, you've got your brake gain. It shows right in the cluster here. So pretty easy to use. And then otherwise looking around in here, it's pretty typical Silverado. Um, not a whole lot to write home about. This is a plenty nice truck being an LT. You know, you can get an LTZ, you can get a high country, but if you just want, you know, some, some niceties without things being too, too expensive, I think this is a very nice place to sit uh, with, plenty of amenities for not a crazy, crazy price. The sticker on this one, like I said, it's an LT with a Z71, uh, the, I think the premium package. It's got a couple of things on it. It's about 64 grand with that gas V8. So um, not a crazy uh, sort of pricing situation going on. One more thing as we look around the interior, just down by my left knee, a few more controls to see. You've got your controls for your four wheel drive right here, two wheel drive, four high, four low. And you've got a tow mode right there. And then all your lighting controls uh, all in one pod here and your parking brake. So nice and easy to deal with, easy to set up. So that is your interior tour. That is one of the biggest things they've done for 2024 on these Silverados. And it is a much welcomed, much needed upgrade. So that is that. Now let's get on the road and talk all about how this thing is to tow with. Uh, first things first, the 6.6 .6 gasoline V8. So I've driven the 2024 2500 Silverado. Uh, recently, when I was out in Palm Springs, I drove uh, several of them in ZR2 Bison trim, which is the most off-road focused trim, uh, more so than the Z71 is. And all of the 2500s we drove out there were the Duramax diesel. And I even towed with one on the street, not off-road, but uh, took a 30-foot camper and, you know, dragged it up down the highway. So a couple things there. Uh, first of all, the ZR2 with the diesel. Uh, the diesel in itself is enough torque to shift the world into a different time zone if you needed to. And then I thought the ZR2 suspension wise, obviously great off-road, very compliant, good body control, but it was a little soft with the trailer. I didn't love how it towed, but it wasn't bad. It was just kind of, it was, it was fine for the purpose of that truck. But if you're staying on the pavement, 
and especially towing toward the top of these trucks rated weight capacity, you really want something that's really at home here. So we'll dive into suspension in a second, but first of all, the gas V8. Um, it makes peak power at 5,200 RPM uh, and peak torque at 4,000. So you are going to be working it if you need to really make some power up a steep grade. Now, the plus side is it's a big V8. It sounds good doing it and it's not that loud and that intrusive. We'll, we'll get some grades here in a minute. I think it makes plenty of power and torque, and having the extra ratios of the 10-speed versus the old 6-speed helps it not feel like such a deficit off of the, the Duramax turbo diesel. The diesel is just gonna like loaf along and not care about what you do. This one, you're gonna have to work a little harder, especially if you're you know pulling out to pass or you're maintaining speed up a steep hill, whatever. But uh, it's still pretty good. I really don't have complaints about the engine. Now talking about the transmission, I think the behavior is very good. Uh, there is a tow mode, of course. It just kind of changes the shift mapping and uh, it gives you a little bit more downshift logic when you're on the brakes. It's not super aggressive. It doesn't give you a ton of engine braking, but it does do a nice job. Suspension wise, this is where I want to really dive into this a little bit more because this one is an LT, which would normally just be a pretty typical mid trim, nice but not too nice, uh, highway tire, highway suspension sort of truck. But then Chevy went and put the Z71 package on this one. And I think when you're shopping, you need to think about this stuff because Z71 gives you two things that I don't love about this truck in particular. It gives you all-terrain tires versus a highway tire, and it gives you Rancho shocks, which the brand doesn't much matter here. It, it really, it's just the fact that they're putting a softer suspension and ultimately a tire that is both a little softer and has big tread blocks that get a little squirmy if you need them to perform at really you know high, uh, high performance sort of situations, i.e. heavy braking with a trailer, uh, cornering with a trailer, that sort of thing, stability when you're passing an 18-wheeler with a trailer. So this is not doing a bad job. Uh, it's actually doing a totally fine job. But if you're never going to take the truck off-road, you don't need the Z71 package. And I would say, in fact, you probably should avoid it because what I don't love is that this is like, this is all fine right now. I'm on a flat straight road. But if you get some spots with some expansion joints or some kind of, you know, poorly maintained pavement, whatever, um, you're going to get some, some bounce going on. And the, this truck is soft enough that it's not catching itself the way I would want it to on the street. So all that to say, you get a lot of bounce, especially out of the front end, I think because I've got weight on the back end with the, the tongue weight. It just feels like it's set up for being more compliant off-road than it is on the highway dragging weight behind it. So it's doing fine right now. It's just when the pavement gets a little iffy, the ride is also not my favorite. Totally capable. I'm, I feel safe with it. It's, you know, it's, it's not bad, but for how I would use one of these trucks, never ever ever will this thing go off pavement in my ownership I would skip the Z71 uh, the one thing about the steering is that it is indeed heavy it's heavy at, at parking lot speeds especially which is fine you want heavy steering because you don't want it super light and blowing all over on the interstate uh, I wish it was a touch lighter at parking lot speed if they could vary the assist on it a touch more I think there is a special power steering option that this truck doesn't have that will do that, but it's not on this. And then brakes, I talked about brakes in the video with the 2500ZR2, they work fine. You just have to get into the pedal more than you would with a smaller truck, which is not groundbreaking at all, to be totally honest. It's, it's a very heavy truck. It's a lot more uh, weight to slow down before you even put a trailer on it. And then especially with a trailer, even with trailer brakes. So uh, not a big deal. It's just these are not sports car brakes. They are plenty adequate. And then some other tech highlights of this truck. Uh, this first one, I'm not sure if it's new this year. I don't think it is on the 2500. I just don't remember because I haven't driven a 2500 in a while before this one and, and the ZR2. But when you put your turn signal on, there's a camera in either mirror that will show you the view down the side of the truck and the trailer. And it's angled such that it really is legit helpful if you're trying to change lanes. So that is really lovely during the day. And then at night, uh, GM has improved how the trailer blind spot monitoring works uh, so that you get a little more accuracy. And I think it will go a little bit longer if you've got a longer trailer now, but uh, don't quote me on that. In any case, uh, having trailer blind spot monitoring is so, so, so nice. If you haven't towed with something that has it, it makes such a difference, especially at night when you can't necessarily judge where people are as well because you've just got headlights versus daylight to help you see cars. So super helpful. I love that that's a thing. Uh, and obviously it works very nicely. Now, uh, all these trucks have these big 
toe mirrors that I think look very silly. They look like a big uh, flappy inflatable waving arm tube band, but uh, in any case, they work well. Um, you've got good views down the trailer. You've got the regular mirror and then the convex mirror at the bottom. Only the top half, the main mirror, is power adjustable. If you want to adjust the bottom half, you're going to be getting out and doing that by hand. Uh, that's something that Ram did starting in 2019 or 2020, and it's really, really nice. So I wish others would do it, but I just haven't seen it yet. Here we're going up some hills. Let's listen to that V8. So we're at our peak torque right now at 4,000, but we're not working too, too hard to maintain speed. I mean, this is between three and 4,000 RPM right now. And you know, now we're back to whatever tall gear at 2,500-ish RPM. So um, you get bursts of that, that, you know, wound out V8 going on, but this is just, this is doing a nice job engine wise. And I just don't necessarily know. I mean, if you really need the Duramax, if you're going to be towing at the tippy top of this truck's load range all the time, I understand why you might want it. If you're going to be at the truck's payload all the time, I understand why you might want it. If you're towing, you know, a couple times a month, this is just, it's so much cheaper versus the diesel to both buy into and then operate that this is a very solid option. And I, I think with the 10 speed over the six speed, like I said, the ratio spread is so good that it makes it feel a little more spry than it might have in past years. So uh, that is, you know, quite nice. And then as far as other stuff going on in here, this is a plenty nice place to spend time. The seats are comfortable. They're not a million way adjustable. I've got a manually adjustable steering column, heaven forbid, but you know, I don't have ventilated seats, like whatever. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that Oftentimes we get sent fully loaded trucks, which is nice. Fully loaded cars too, whatever. We get sent loaded stuff, which is nice because it shows off all the different options. But in the case of these trucks, a lot of people aren't buying high country trim levels. They're not buying the fully loaded ones because they can't afford them. You know, they're really expensive. And it's really nice to get sent an LT. This is probably what a lot of people are gonna get. This is an LT with some stuff added to it. And I think it is pretty well equipped. It is a pretty good value. If it were me buying one, I would skip the Z71 because unless you're going to spend time off-road, you just don't need it and it will tow better without it. But you could be in one of these for like 60 and it would be a pretty nice place to spend time. All right, and that's a wrap. Thank you so much for coming along on this towing review of the 2024 Silverado 2500 LT Z71 with the 6.6 liter gas V8 and Allison 10 speed transmission. That's a lot of words. Anyway, please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at OutMotorsports and head over to OutMotorsports.com if you want to meet some LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors. We would love to get to know you and become your new best friends online and at our events in person. So head over there and get signed up and we would love to see you there. Till next time, please stay safe, be well. See you again soon.